Hi, welcome to A God Vlog. I am standing up here on the 186th anniversary of this awesome church, First Congregational United Church of Christ in Mount Vernon, Ohio. I'm all excited because we have just painted and remodeled up here and they're getting um, towards the end and I thought today I'd come up with Sunday, July 26th, the exact birthday of the church. And most of us probably know, most of you probably know that our church started out as, as an anti-slavery church. And a huge part of our first missions and ministries was to work to strive for the freedom of American citizens who were being enslaved. And the first minister of our church, born in the throes of our anti-slavery beginnings, was Benjamin King. And the church actually began in a barn near Bangs, Ohio, and then met in a house near where the church is now, and then we met in a Methodist church that used to be on um, what later becomes the high school ground, we now know as the old high school. And then we had our own building over on Mulberry Street, which is um, basically where the library is now. We were in that space, and we occupied um, that church from 1835 to about 1867. And we began um, with the name of uh, the Free Presbyterian Church. Um, the First Congregational Church um, is the name that we took in 1849. Free Presbyterian churches were formed to advocate um, for slaves to be free. And so we were an anti-slavery church from the start. And anti-slavery advocates were also often involved in temperance and suffrage movements in our church, the First Congregational Church. Church. We weren't in the building um, when we began, but we embraced both of those movements as well. In the mid-1800s, an early woman's right advocate, um, Amelia Bloomer, attended the church. Bloomers, um, which are a, a part of women's clothing, are, are actually named after her. She was famous for wearing them at the time. And Lucy Stone, another suffrage activist, gave a, a lecture in our church on women in the workplace. And over in that, that first building from 1860 to 1865, our focus included gathering and preparing large quantities of supplies for the um, Northern armies during the Civil War. And then shortly after the Civil War ended in 1867, we, we sold our church structure and we moved out into, believe it or not, what was then the library, which used to be right across the street there um, from where our church stands now. We were in the library for uh, a year while the new building, this one that we were in, was um, finally completed. It actually took three years to build this building, and after that one year in the library, we moved into the park in 1868. They actually used to call this area the audience room, and we call it the sanctuary. Back in the 1870s, it was fashionable to have seats for the well-to-do. Members of this church rejected that notion and created equal seating for everyone. You can't see it right now. It's all underneath the, the wraps over there, but um, it's a practice most churches have now, but we've long had it. We didn't buy the seats. Um, we all could sit equally where we wanted to. Although there's a 1950 rendering in our parlor downstairs of the early ch church that shows a brick facade, early photographs of the church suggest Perhaps stucco was on the front of the building um, earlier than um, that, uh, and maybe always, although there is some notes that suggest maybe the brick was painted. And in 1960, we had a giant spire that could be seen all over town. In 1916, um, it was hit by lightning, and a, a big fire hit the church and engulfed not only the tower, but other portions of it. And the church leaders decided to take the spiral off and then remodel um, a portion of the tower so it looks like we have now they added some windows and they, they changed the roof line a bit. The church over the years has been restuccoed and re roofed and it was even substantially remodeled in the 1950s with a whole new education wing on that side and offices put in below. Um, we've had the interior painted before, I'm sure, on a number of occasions. I know um, 10 or 15 years ago they painted it in here and um, since I've been here we've repaired the the bell, we got it ringing for the first time in a dozen or more years, and we repaired the bell tower, and we fixed the social hall below, and um, of course we're just finishing painting this with, with, 
the new lights, there's a new speaker system being put in, new sound and, and heating and cooling projects that are being completed up here. A hundred years ago, um, and I talk about this in the, the newsletter um, note that I'm, that's coming out next week, a um, hundred years ago there was a pandemic that closed churches as well. Um, there, um, I'm pretty sure this church was among them. There's hope in that fact because this church survived and thrived after all of that was over. So on this 186th anniversary of the church, let us pray that someday soon, sooner, sooner than we think, we will all be able to safely return to in-person services. And don't get me wrong, we are still thriving and surviving and being church, but, but we miss seeing each other and being with each other and worshiping together with one another and providing um, up close and personal love and care. It is very important. Um, I miss all of you. I know that you all miss the church and one another. Thank you for joining me. Please keep the church and one another in prayer and go in peace knowing that you are loved and that you matter much. Happy anniversary to the first congregation. Peace.